Description of a Typical Vertebra In order to understand the composition of the spinal column and to understand its static as well as mechanical function that leads to very complex type of movement, one needs to take a look first at the concept of a vertebra and that's why this section has been titled Description of a Typical Vertebra. What we understand is that all vertebrae are basically built on the same template given some regional differences or regional characteristics as we're going to see it later on when we describe typical cervical or typical thoracic or typical lumbar vertebra. For description of typical vertebra we're going to use one of the thoracic vertebrae that appear to have easiest features that we need to identify and then later on with the help of this type of vertebra, we will be able to accept that same findings, although in a different form and different shape, do exist in group of cervical and lumbar vertebrae. So let's take a look. This is one typical vertebra. Let's find out what are the parts we need to identify in order to be able to describe it. We're going to start from its anterior part, going to posterior direction and we're finding large body of a vertebra. Of course due to its size we expect that vertebral bodies will become larger as we move from superior to inferior direction. To the posterior side of vertebral body we're seeing pedicles. The term pedicle translated into English means little foot there isn't much similarity about pedicle and our perception of foot. However, this is what Latin term has accepted as standard terminology. Posterior to paired pedicles come the straight part of a vertebra that is known as the lamina. There are two laminae, one on the left, one on the right. And as they all fuse together, namely the body, the pedicles and the laminae, they actually form this large opening which is known as the vertebral foramen. Vertebral foramen also could be called the neural foramen as we will see it later on. It houses spinal cord, spinal meninges and spinal nerves that arise from the surface of the spinal cord. With introduction of body, pedicles, and laminae, we created a template to which we are going to add multiple projections that are all commonly referred in anatomy using Latin terms as processes. So let's take a look at the longest process which is directed posteriorly. Its name is the spinous process. There is only one. To the side, vertebra sends two horizontally oriented processes and for that reason they are named as the transverse processes where a term the transverse reflects transverse or horizontal anatomical plane. In order to see additional two paired processes we will need to place this vertebra in a different position so to observe it from the side in order to see better position of upper and lower processes that'll form joints with vertebrae above and below this one. This is the same vertebra as we used for previous part of this section. So let's take a look at parts that we are already familiar with. Here is vertebral body followed by pedicles. Here is the transverse process and here is the spinous process of vertebra. On this video it looks like the upwards oriented superior articular processes are arising straight from the pedicles. It might look like this just because of position of camera. However, we can see here superior articular process and another one as they need to make the joint between this vertebra 
in the vertebra above it. On the lower end of the bone, we can see those straight surfaces that actually point to position of inferior articular processes that will make the joint between this vertebra and one below it. Here are right and the left side superior articular processes. For better viewing of the inferior articular processes, we had to put this vertebra so that we see its underside. Here is inferior articular process and here is its counterpartner on the opposite side of the vertebra. This is vertebral body and this opening here is vertebral foramen. On the inferior side, vertebrae would exhibit quite a deep notch which is formed between vertebral body, pedicle and laminae. That notch is known as the inferior vertebral notch. There is also a superior vertebral notch which is a little bit harder to identify as it is formed between the most posterior part of the vertebral body and rising parts of the in superior articular processes. In order to understand better why superior and inferior vertebral notches are described, we need to place two vertebrae together and to understand that between superior and inferior vertebral notches practically two vertebrae would form an opening, an intervertebral foramen, that will allow passage of a spinal nerve to go from inside of the spinal canal through the intervertebral foramen into the rest of the body, into peripheral parts of the body.